Uh, Eddie Hearn rocked up at TalkSport Studio, credit to him, uh, and sat across from Simon Jordan. They went back and forth over 90 minutes on the White and Jordan show on Tuesday of this week. Uh, what did you make of it all, Gareth? Uh, Gareth, because it was absolutely captivating listening as I was driving around uh, my hometown listening. I couldn't switch the radio off. Yeah, it was fascinating. And obviously, as you say, it was meant to be an hour, but went 90 minutes. They could have gone on for a couple of days, couldn't they? <laughs> and, uh, and, and you know, they, they still would have been, if both had been bald, they'd have been arguing over a comb. And that's the kind of men they are when they get the bit between their teeth. Um, look, I think I, I was pleased to hear Eddie Hearn say that he he regretted uh, saying he'd considering his options. And I was very happy at that point. And I thought, well, maybe he's going to turn a corner here. But I've got to say, I think Simon pressed him too hard at times in the first 45 minutes of the interview. And rather like a boxer on the ropes, keeping his opponent on the ropes, didn't step back and let his hands go with a bit of space and kind of crowded him a little bit. When he didn't crowd Eddie, I thought it was fascinating then. He tripped Eddie up a couple of times. You you did it yourself as well. And you can explain that in a minute. It's very, very interesting about boxing border control rulings over Varda because Eddie Hearns maintained this line that he couldn't pull Conor Ben out of the fight, which I've questioned him privately and publicly about as well. And there isn't an mm-hmm. answer. He blames the boxing border control for not coming back, but that's his line. I don't agree with it. But, but finally... At the end of it all, and this is where I think Simon could have come on him even harder, even though he 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 said that Eddie was was morally or even ethically wrong, and I agree with him. And I've said to Eddie myself, how can he be talking about Conor Ben uh, going into a fight with either Manny Pacquiao, uh, Kelbrook, or or it looks like the Chris Eubank fight, junior fight again in June, probably somewhere in the Middle East, when he hasn't cleared his name yet. That's the biggest thing that came out of the interview for me that we haven't moved on. That They've gone around the corners with loopholes and Eddie's, you know, brazenly talking about it on air. Um, and I think Simon was right in that that respect to really push, um, to, to, to push Eddie on those things. It was a fascinating, you know, Simon's a very um, mat- a meticulous and articulate man. He's a, he's a great businessman, as we know. He's been there, done it. He's got the T-shirt. He's, he's been in big time business. Um, and Eddie is, is one of the big time promoters. So it was a heavyweight class in that sense and you know and Simon's not a gentle person in any way shape or form <laughs> and goes hard on people he called Eddie a charlatan didn't he um, at one point you know um, a snake a snake oil salesman I mean I don't know what your take of it was yeah I don't think there's any need for any of the, the personal jibes is there when they're, when they're in that type of conversation at the end of the day I think the majority of people and the, the, the I think and I'd like to think that both men are heading in the right direction. They want what's best for boxing. They want, I'm sure, the sport to be better. Every single fan wants the sport to be better. Um, And this whole situation, which stems back to last July, when the first test in the clean boxing program was taken, has really dragged boxing through the mud. I think it's left a real sour taste in the in the in the mouth of fans. This week, when these two gentlemen were sat across from each other and were chatting about various points, I thought Eddie made some good points. He made some valid points. I thought Simon did exactly the same thing. It went back and forth. My own take away when on my own personal podcast when I was uh, referring to certain things here. I just wanted to highlight certain bits that I thought were factually incorrect, and one of those things that were factually incorrect were, was the fact that. Um, Simon Jordan challenged Eddie on this narrative that has been consistent. And this co- this popped up when Conor Ben had his conversation with Piers Morgan. He kept referring, and Eddie's referred to it on several occasions, that the British Boxing Border Control don't recognise VADA. Now, that isn't true, because as I pointed out in the rules and regulations, which... Uh, is available on the British Boxing Border Control website. If you scroll down to page 60, rule 31.5 or 31V, whatever you want to refer to it as, it states quite clearly that uh, the British, or all license holders, and that's, he's obviously pointing towards Conor Ben and all license holders of a British Boxing Border Control license, which Conor Ben isn't anymore, but at the time he was, uh, must adhere uh, to uh, testing procedures uh, to any competent body under the auspices of World Anti-Doping. Um, and World Anti-Doping is the uh, the overriding drug testing uh, Bible, I suppose, if that's the best way of describing it, for the majority of uh, of testing procedures. UK Anti-Doping falls under that. V- voluntary Anti-Doping falls under that. USADA in the world of uh, mixed martial arts and, and UFC falls under, under that. 
Um, but I, I, the first question, and I kind of agree with Eddie Hearn on this, even though I've got questions about Eddie and his conduct throughout the whole course of this of this matter, and I, and you know, I'd love the opportunity to sit down with him and have a conversation with him about that. But I, I do agree with him. Under the rules, the British Boxing Board of Control had the power to pull that fight on the 23rd of September rather than let it go on for but that's why, five weeks. Yeah, but Ed, um, just to, it's a, the, these are all fantastic points, but that that is the whole point that Eddie has made all the way along, that he's left it at the foot of the door of the Boxing Board of Control. And, and I don't see any in any way, shape or form that he would not have had the authority to withdraw that fight as well. No, I agree with that. But, that but, the, but, the, but the book stops with them as well. They are the sanctioning both, body. They both have of the them. power to... Both of them. They have, uh, yeah, li yeah. Listen, he's the promoter, so therefore, in my opinion, and as per the rules, and he says that his contracts are bound by the rules of the British Boxing Board of Control. I'd love to see one of those contracts to see in there where it actually states that he is the promoter, the person that he's putting on the, putting on the event, the person that he's liable for near enough everything that happens at that event, how he cannot, if a fighter brings his event into disrepute, and I think two failed drug tests actually does that. Of course it does. How he, how, how he cannot uh, pull that event. But I also agree with what he's saying that as per the rules of the British Boxing Board of Control that the British Boxing Board of Control had the authority and the power to make a decision on the 23rd of September when that second test result came in to say right pump the brakes Connor Ben here's your hearing date come and see us yeah. just stop everything regarding yeah. this fight that's going ahead on October the 8th there's your hearing Connor come and see us because we want to know a little bit more about this situation. How has this drug got inside your system? We'll have a hearing and then maybe... Spend yeah, but why didn't they want to, Ed? As a process. But why didn't they want to? Because there's strict liability because, and, the, and he was potentially going to get yeah, a two-year ban if he couldn't explain yeah, but, it. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're coming at this from a Conor Ben point of view. I'm talking from, yeah. a, from a British boxing border yeah. control point of view. Why did they not pull that fight at that, on it's, that day? It, it beggars belief that they didn't and they should have and, and we need an answer. But, um, but what we understand, what, what Robert Smith has maintained, I've spoken to him again and again and again, he cannot talk about it because there is an understanding that has there been in the background a cease and desist um, from Eddie Hearn and Matrim or Dazon or whoever it was. Well, Eddie denies that. Eddie says he no. He does deny but it. Yeah, but yeah. they were about to go to court yeah. on that on that Wednesday of fight week. They were about to go to court. I can guarantee you that there were intentions to go to court, even though that Eddie denies it. The board won't talk about it. They, look, and where are we? J just, just do the loop. Six months later, where are we? The fight's going ahead in June, either in America or the Middle East, wherever they can get to sanction it. So all it does, it rides roughshod over a testing system that hasn't he hasn't been exonerated from he hasn't had a genuine hearing uh, it, it it you know you know listen you know me i am someone that loves fight sports i do not enjoy the darkness surrounding it this has been one of the most de desperately depressing episodes in the entire time i've been involved in boxing it's so depressing you just wonder what is going on in the background here? There's no clarification of Conor Ben's situation other than a non-strict liability exoneration from, from the WBC. Add it... They are going to press on. Eddie was in here, sitting in this very studio we're in now, four days ago, saying, yeah, we're probably going to do Eubank because uh, uh, Liam Smith and Eubank's not signed. We're going to do Conor Ben and, and Chris Eubank. And do you know what? We'll all be there because it's so controversial. The tree's falling in the forest. We've got to be there to witness the sound of it falling. It's going to be depressing, controversial, and very, very weird in my view. It shouldn't be happening. Yeah, exactly. That's the, the point. But we've got but to be the, there to cover it. Yeah, I, look, well, it's, I think you put it well the other day. I think I was listening to you on H&J, and, and it was a case of, listen, wars go on. Nobody nobody is here and supports a war. But at the end of the day, you've got to go and report, report on, on it. Report on it, exactly. To in, inform those people what is actually going on. And that is kind of a situation that we've got here with this Conor Ben. We shouldn't be in this situation. There's, what Would a world we, governing we, body change this? Is that the answer to it, Ad? Could we create a world governing body that says, no, you are having a hearing, you have a hearing with your with the commission that licensed you that you're going to fight under. No, you cannot fight in any other jurisdiction until you've had a hearing and you've presented your evidence. He doesn't believe in the VADA testing being correct. That's his case. So let's have that case tried. Uh, um, uh, governing, listen, maybe... But for me, the, 
the major thing is a clear and transparent procedure when it comes to drug testing. We just don't have one. No, there isn't. We just one. don't have one. Yeah. Let me let me give let me give you an example of what something that has happened in the UFC this week. Yeah, but that doesn't matter because of... that's a fight league. It's not a sport. No, the I'm UFC giving you an I'm, a league, Listen to what you know? I'm saying. Listen yeah. to what I'm saying regarding drug testing. So the UFC this week have a yeah. fighter that has failed a drug test. Right. They're under the auspices of USADA. Yeah. So they they have suspended the fighter's license immediately. They're not no questions. It's not like oh it's that strict liability or anything like that. No, you failed a test. You are now suspended. Done, right? You are now you are now granted a hearing. It is up to you to now provide all the th- the plausible reasons in order for you to then yeah. minimize your ban or eradicate your ban. And that is what we don't do in boxing. We don't do that. Boxing has to do that. It has to. If you have, we need to take failed drug tests seriously. We just don't do it. And if somebody pops up for whatever drug it may be. No ifs, no buts, no maybe. It's just a pure absolute of going, you can't fight until you have now given us plausible reasons Completely as agree. to why that is in your system. Yeah, unless not, you're Conor Ben. Unless you're Conor not, McGregor, rather, sorry. Unless you're Conor McGregor. Well, not, not just the, this whole situation where Conor Ben, I believe, was asked for a hearing by the British Boxing Board of Control and on the day of the hearing then fails to renew his license conveniently yeah. and therefore he no, he, he's no longer licensed. And if he doesn't have a license, they can't take anything off him. So they can't ban him on anything. Mm. And now all of a sudden he's free to go and apply for a different jurisdiction's license. It is the Wild West. Oh, It's, it's okay. an absolute farce. And you know, and it's always been like this, unfortunately. It's always, and it does need to change. It so needs to change. Do you think... Do you think? I mean, the WBC Cares program is trying to do that in a sense, isn't it? Which is what th- they've well, got. There's no strict th- liability with that case, but there's no strict liability in the UFC. Obviously, Jeff, Jeff Nowitzki came over. was a government agent who um, was uh, yeah. instrumental in in the, in the trapping Lance of Lance Armstrong, Armstrong in the yeah, end. Yeah. I mean, I know Jeff very well. He's a fantastic uh, yeah. scientist, sports scientist, and uh, an official. But to what extent is you know, he he he's the drug czar, if you like, for the UFC. He's that last line of defence, isn't he? That that's what we need to create in boxing. In as much as um, there needs to be m- maybe like a, a, a WADA chief that oversees boxing. That's the only way they could do it, in my view. Where yes. there was someone with a jurisdiction from WADA to, that that. All four sanctioning bodies, perhaps, and all licensing th- authorities in the world, and sanctioning bodies for anyone listening, don't license the boxers. That maybe they all sign up unilaterally to someone at WADA that oversees those systems. Do you know what I mean? That would be an answer to it at the moment, I think. Gareth, think back to the conversation that Conor Ben had with Piers Morgan. When Piers Morgan asked him, What did you think when you failed your first test? I didn't think anything of it. Yeah. That attitude is frightening. Yeah. Absolutely frightening that yep. a, a fighter of his stature yep. has that attitude to a failed drug test. Yeah, yeah. Can I say, Ed, can I say, let's not forget, I will say this line till I am no longer here on this earth every time we discuss it. This is an inherently dangerous sport. The cradle that we must remember, the cradle of the sport, is to try and make sure that no one is performance enhanced with drugs when they go in. Because when you sign a contract to fight, you can be legally killed in the ring. And that's what we have to to uphold for all our fighters. Absolutely.